As we start to learn about bifurcations, one of the most interesting and simple but very useful examples is the example of taking the logistic model and including a constant harvesting term. So let's just review the logistic model really quick. In one dimension, we have the growing term Rx, where R represents a constant per capita growth rate. And then we have this rate limiting term that speaks to um, the finite availability of resources, such as food and space, where we have 1 minus x, to the, x divided by k, where k represents the carrying capacity. So without this extra stuff, that's your classical one-dimensional dim logistic equation. Now what we're going to do is add an extra parameter where we're going to subtract away a constant c. And what that represents is constant harvesting per unit time. And so um, remember that in order to really interpret this harvesting term, we're going to have to go back and match it with what it's being equated to, which is dx dt. dx dt is in units of uh, species, number of, um, number of members of a population per time. And so c is going to have those same units, so that tells us how many fish per year or worms per month, or whatever species per whatever unit time that we seek to harvest out of the system. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to start our journey toward bifurcation theory, and probably a very first step in that is explaining the word. So you can go ahead up and look up the word on a dictionary to see what that has to tell you. Um, but in mathematics, when we refer to bifurcation, what we're trying to say is that there's some sort of qualitative change in a system's behavior. And I mean qualitative here instead of quantitative, in the sense that I'm just trying to describe an overarching quality. That's why it's called qualitative. Some sort of quality of the system. And I'm going to show you through these three graphs what I mean by a qualitative change in behavior. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking a look at the tangent versus state space graph where we have f of x versus x and I've graphed it for three different levels of harvesting. So first draw your attention to the black line which is a down facing parabola that represents fixed points at zero and at k the carrying capacity. And this black line is what the system would look like if we have no harvesting at all. So if c is equal to zero, remember then if this isn't there we have our usual logistic behavior where we have a stable equilibrium point located at k and an unstable equilibrium point located at zero. And remember that the phase lines that I'm drawing here are equivalent to drawing those arrows on the horizontal part of a tangent versus state space axes. And how you know where to draw the arrows is you just pick a place and then you look up or down, you look for the location of the function describing the rate of change. And if that function is positively valued, if it's above the horizontal axis, it means move to the right. If you pick a spot and you see that the function f of x is negatively valued, if it's below the horizontal axis, then that's telling you that your dynamics are moving to the left. And so that's how these right and left arrows get laid on to the one-dimensional state space um, that you see there. Okay, so the black line represents no harvesting at all. That's just our classical logistic model. And now let's consider uh, a case where we're just going to take a little. We're just going to harvest a little harvest. And so C here, I've written as a little. Um, what a little and a lot means will be relative to the actual situation, relative to the actual numbers that you have for R, um, K, and C. But conceptually, when I mean a little, I mean... I'm just going to tug this graph down a little bit. Keep in mind from pre-calculus that when you do a minus term right here, that's akin to just a vertical translation of the graph. And so we're going to take the original black graph that had no c, and by subtracting off a little where c is equal to some little value, it just vertically translated it down just by that much. Okay? Now what happened to the phase line and what happened to the uh, equilibrium points and their stability? So you can kind of still read that off the graph here, where when I pull it down a little bit, these black points that used to represent the equilibria are now getting squeezed a little tighter together. Okay, so the unstable and the stable equilibria have now come closer together. 
However, the stability still remains the same in that the green graph is positive here and the green graph is negative there. And so the arrows are pointing to a stable equilibrium point that's at some value just a little bit less than the carrying capacity. And an unstable equilibrium point which has a value that's a little bit greater than zero. Okay, so that's what the phase line looks like for a little harvest. Um, keep in mind that the big green circles represent the equilibrium points, just like these black circles represented the equilibria above here. But I also drew tick marks for zero and K so that you can see the relative positions of the equilibria. On the green graph, they've squeezed closer together. So the zero unstable equilibria moved a little bit to the right, and the uh, black carrying capacity equilibrium point moved a little bit to the left. Okay. Nevertheless, when I talk about the quality, remember the qualitative change, the quality of this graph, um, the green graph is very similar to the black graph. Basically, if I wanted to describe the quality of this system in either the black or the green cases, I would say it has two fixed points, one that's stable and then one that's uh, unstable, right? So two fixed points, one unstable one to the left and one stable fixed point to the right. Even though the fixed points moved a little bit, they have the same quality that they had in the black case. There's two of them, and the left one is unstable, and the right one is stable. So it's kind of the same case. It's kind of the same situation when we talk about the qualitative nature of the system. Qualitatively, the green system, pretty much the same thing as the black system. But now let's compare that with this red one where I'm saying I'm going to take a huge harvest. If I have that logistic population and it's looking pretty delicious, I'm just going to harvest a whole bunch of it. If I harvest a whole bunch of it and the value for C is a very large value, that would correspond to a very large vertical translation downwards of the original black graph. And you can see that if I pull this black graph down far enough, it will no longer intersect the x-axis. That means the zeros, or the roots, or the x-intercepts of this graph no longer exist in the red case. They've disappeared. Now that's not qualitatively the same thing as having two, right? Two and zero, those are qualitatively different. So when you look at the um, statement of bifurcation as a qualitative change in a system's behavior, I will say that at some point between the black and the green, which are qualitatively the same, at some point, it flipped to a new, a qualitatively different situation where you have no fixed points, no equilibrium points anymore. And if I was going to draw arrows on the graph now, remember the arrows are going to go to the right if the graph is positive, and they're going to go to the left if the graph is negative. And so in this red situation, all you have is left behavior. And so that means that moving to the left means it's getting reduced. Your population, if you're going to harvest that many over time, um, your population is just going to go extinct because it's always going to be getting less and less and less. And there's not even a fixed point at zero anymore. It just keeps getting decreased until there's none left. That's qualitatively different than the situation in green where I'm, it's telling me that I can harvest a little and I can still get by having a stable population. If I harvest too many, I'm not going to have anything left to harvest. So a bifurcation occurred somewhere, somewhere in here between having two fixed points where the parabola intersected the x-axis twice and having no fixed points where there's actually no roots, there's no zeros for this anymore. How did that bifurcation happen? Exactly where did it happen? Maybe a topic for another video.